What's up guys, Chris Basil Builds back again. Trying to take a video. The last few videos I've tried to film, I go to edit them and put them together and I'm just like, man, this is terrible. None of you guys are gonna wanna see it. So we've got a fun dilemma today. Which golf cart should we keep? Okay, let me give you a little bit of backstory because most of you probably don't know what I'm talking about. And I apologize for the light. These things tops kill my light. So first off, we have a 1988 Easy Go two-stroke Robin 244cc golf cart. 1988, I think. Yes. And then we have a 1989 Club Car DS. Uh, it is equipped with a four-stroke Kawasaki. Uh, what's the engine called again? It is a... FZ340D, if any of you guys do any small engine stuff, you've seen a Kawasaki engine code before. So um, Kawasaki built most of the engines for these club car golf carts from what I understand. It says club car on it, but it's obviously got Kawasaki numbers on it. Um, this is a 340cc four stroke, uh, flathead design. R valves are down here in the head. Old school stuff if you're not familiar. Pretty much everything's overhead valve these days. Um, I bought this thing as a basket case. You see, I reassembled as much as I could of what was here. Um, this thing had a connecting rod failure, piston or a crankshaft connecting rod journal failure, and uh, supposedly locked it up, and that's what killed it. So, bought it from an old man. He bought it as a project. He, this guy was legit 80 years old and likes to play with golf carts, but he's more of a like put lights and stuff on kind of guy. So, he bought this thing, realized he was in over his head, decided to pitch it. So he gave it to me in a bunch of different boxes. Luckily, most of the main components are here. Missing some hardware, missing some things, of course, but I know what's wrong with it. I've seen it. I had it all apart. I looked at the crank. I looked at everything. The piston looks great. The bore looks great. I'm sure it needs rings, but really it needs a crank rod, a bunch of miscellaneous hardware, seals, all that kind of stuff, all the, you know, base gasket, head gasket, yada yadas, exhaust gaskets, intake gaskets, a whole set of gaskets. And it's missing some hardware, like the bolt that goes through the pulley. Um, this is a tapered shaft. It's also missing some little plate that goes over here with the lock ring. I don't know about that. Um, so it's missing a couple specific pieces. It's also missing the bracket for the starter generator. It does have a new starter generator. It does have basically like a new looking carburetor. It has a lot of good parts on it. The cart itself, I would call it a five out of 10. It's not that great. It does have good wheels and tires on it. It does have all of its, sorry, I'm not trying to give you guys uh, seizures here. It's got club car branded hubcaps. It's got nice tires that are all good. The top was not on it when I bought it. It was all thrown, a ground, thrown on the ground and the top's a little broken, but it's not bad. I mean, it's on here. You can shake the cart with it. With everything on there tight, I believe it to be fully serviceable. Um, it is missing the windshield. You know, <clears throat> the front is really not pretty. It's got some real, real, real serious body work going on. It appears that it hit something right here. And as you can see, it's got a bit of a hip now that it shouldn't have. This body line should carry across to like here, and it doesn't. So this front piece needs to be replaced. I maybe might mess around, try to see if I can shape it a little bit better. I doubt it, I'm not a body guy. That's its biggest issue. This side looks pretty decent. And honestly, that side's fine. I mean, from 10 feet away, who cares? It's rattle canned, of course. Uh, the seats are pretty junky, but you know, they're the foam's mostly still there. So fixing the seats is no big deal. As you can see, we have a little experience with seat work. We did this. This thing had like no seat cover on it at all when we got it. Um, let's see. It is missing the dash piece, which is just a switch and an oil light. It's not a big deal. I already looked up the wiring to it. It's easy to fix that. Belts are there. Um, under the hood, as you can see, everything minus the engine is in place. Electrical box is there, shifters there fuel tanks there, transmissions there. Transmission, we'll talk more about transmissions in a minute. 
Um, it's belt driven. If you don't know anything about golf carts, pretty straightforward stuff here. Um, it's missing this access cover, but all in all, I kind of like this cart better because it's a four stroke and I know like whatever, two stroke, four stroke, not that big of a deal. This thing's not going to run that much, <coughs> but we're just going to be using it at the lake around the marina, running to the bathroom and back, going to see our friends at their campers and stuff. So we're not going to be putting lots of miles on this and it's never going to haul golf, golf clubs again. If anything, the back's going to end up with a bed or like, I don't know, either a bed or somewhere to put a cooler. Probably want to put a light kit on it. Don't know. Haven't gotten that far yet. So let's start from scratch. So about two years ago, I bought this 1988 Easy Go, also as a basket case. Had the engine in a box next to it, but this thing literally had all the parts. It just had a totally scored cylinder and a really bad piston. It also has some other things wrong with it too that we'll get to here in a second. But So this one's together. I put the engine in it. I put a piston in it and I honed it pretty good and it runs. Um, I had to remake a starter generator bracket because one of them was broken. I had to fab up an intake, AKA put a cheap motorcycle intake on it. Um, some of the battery connections are less than desirable. It has a tractor battery in it. Um, and the fuel tank is a one gallon gas tank that I drilled a hole in the bottom and put a shut off on. So this thing's got its stories too. But, like I said, this one runs. I've had it for, oh, also the top used to, it still has a pretty good whoopie doing it, but it used to go like this. So I bent it back kind of straight just so it's got a decent look to it. It's a 10 footer, 20 footer, but it's better. But this top also sturdily connected, but it's in pretty rough shape. This one's got some hail damage, uh, probably would be my guess. And then from whenever it flipped or bent it or whatever happened over there, uh, we got a rip there. We got some damage back here where the pipe was kind of bent. This is pretty much just like EMT electrical pipe, I feel like. But these gaps and stuff, like, this looks bad, sure. Again, we're going to be driving this thing around the lake, around our marina, pretty small spot. I don't think it's really going to be that big of a deal. I just really don't. Here's the problem. This thing runs and rides. I rode it the other day, aired up the tires. It seems to go pretty good. It's been sitting here for like a year since I fixed it. The problem is the cooling fan. This is a small engine, right? So it just has a cooling fan that runs as the magneto for the coil. The cooling fan is plastic. The cooling fan is proprietary. This is what I have left of the cooling fan, just the hub. All the fins are missing. Interesting thing about this golf cart is that it doesn't have a transmission per se. It just has a transaxle on the back. The engine literally spins one way to go forwards and spins the other way to go in reverse. It's a two stroke, so there's no valves, no timing per se and it's got a port in the piston, so it doesn't matter what direction it spins. It'll literally spin both directions. Okay, well, that's kind of interesting, I guess, but the problem being is that any other small engine fan that you would get doesn't have flat blades. This has flat fan blades all the way around the fan. Well, if you have curved fan blades, it's only going to suck air in and, and blow it one direction. Maybe not that big of a deal, except for as far as I can tell, pretty much every engine, I think this engine spins what you would call backwards of a standard engine. Whatever, not that big of a deal, except for no cooling fan. So I just put a piston in this thing and the cylinder was a little scored, so I honed it and it should be okay, but I don't know. So I'm thinking keeping it cool is probably gonna be a good first bet to buy some life out of this thing. I think that no matter what, it's going to be fine for the limited amount of use I'm going to give it, but that's just something to note. This one, I like that it's a four-stroke. I like that it's not going to be smoky. I like that I won't have to mix the gas, because although this has oil injection, I don't think it works, because I uh, it's got oil in it, and I tried. I've run it for quite a while, and I haven't seen any oil in the oil line, so maybe it needs to be primed, or maybe I didn't get the gear on right. Don't think so. Pretty sure I did, but uh, yeah, so I mixed the gas on this one. So, and it's only got a one gallon gas tank. It's just a one gallon gas can is the gas tank. It's a quick trip gas tank special that I decided to sacrifice. So here's my dilemma. 
Now this thing runs. I can make a fan work, and I will. Do I just take that to the lake and enjoy it? Pitch this thing? I mean, I only paid a couple hundred bucks for this one. So although, yes, it's a basket case, it looks 120,000% better than it did when I bought it two days ago. And this guy was getting killed with messages. So let's say I take better pictures of it, clean it up, take the duct tape off the seat, and I've got this engine back in one-ish piece, as far as you can tell. Do I list it? I don't know. This is my dilemma. Comment down in the comments below. What do you think? Keep the easy go because it's ready to go. Rebuild the club car. Keep the easy go till the club car's done, then sell the easy go. I don't know. It's going to cost, I guesstimated the parts cost on the club car to be um, the website that I found that's got actually all the parts uh, for the internal engine stuff. I'm looking at about 400 bucks for a crank rod, rings, gaskets, uh, crank seals. Should be the whole shebang to re legit reassemble the engine. So there's that. 400 bucks to build the engine. Then, obviously, probably going to try and do something about this bodywork. Or maybe not. I don't know. Maybe put some lights on it and just sand it a little bit better so it doesn't look like Play-Doh. I don't know. Or maybe just, who cares? It's a golf cart. And then roll this one with a freshly built engine, not a top-end job like that one got. That one's bottom end was together when I got it. I blew it out and cleaned it. It didn't make any noise, so I put it back together. I put a piston, rings, and a hone to it standard size. So it's good. I'm sure it'll last for a long time, but it's not a full rebuild. Whereas this one's going to get everything, bearings, crank, rod, pistons in perfect condition, but I'm going to clean it real good and put new rings on it. Cylinders in perfect condition because it's a four stroke. It's not, doesn't chew up pistons because it's not a two stroke. That's what they do. So yeah, I don't know. It's going to be a lot of work to fix this one, and I've already kind of been through it. But to be honest, I kind of think that I will like this one better. So I think I've talked myself into what I want to do. I think we're just going to go ahead and scotch guard the seat on this thing, maybe put some tape on the on the roof to make it, or plastic weld the roof a little bit to make it a little bit better. And then we'll just take it to the lake and enjoy it for now. And then this will stay here, and I'll figure out what to do with it. So I think that's the plan so far. Like I said, comment down below. Uh, what do you think? What golf, what, what golf cart do you like better? Also, um, should have filmed it, but I didn't. I completely redid my garage. Uh, if anybody's watched any of my previous videos, you've just seen crap piled up everywhere. Obviously, there's still crap piled up everywhere. But we've got organized places for things. We set up some storage, some wall hanging stuff. I added a shelf. So I can put my fluids up there. I took out this workbench because it was crappy. Moved my uh, little roll around toolbox there. as a mobile workstation. Um, Reconfigured my compressor situation. I've got my reel hooked up and I need to do some better piping, but I just used what I had. Fixed the leak on my air compressor so it doesn't leak down after two days anymore. Cleaned up my toolbox, cleaned up my work area here. Obviously, you can't tell because I've already piled an engine on it, and I just fixed this drill press, but I did some wall storage with some bins so I can keep my grab-and-go stuff ready to roll. Got all my, like, electrical stuff. I got some body, like, pens and clips and stuff, and then some electrical, high-voltage, low, uh, small engine. You know, we got a medley of stuff, kind of, like, a lot like what I work on, so... So we got going on, put some shelving up so I can put my power tools somewhere. Um, I've still got some more tuning in to do. Now that I started cleaning stuff and organizing, I think I've got a little bit better handle on what I want in the garage. So I'm just excited to have, uh, you know, motivation to want to work on stuff because I've got open work areas. So stay tuned for that. Going to be posting a lot more videos coming up soon, just like everybody says. And uh, maybe I'll video rebuilding this golf cart. I don't know. But thanks for watching anyways, guys. Have a great day, and uh, we will talk to you soon. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, watch what I got going on. I got some interesting stuff going on. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Chris Basil Builds out.